ever want to curl up under a warm blanket and sleep through the freezing winter just like bears? Actually, many animals do that. But unfortunately, it doesn't work with us humans. Or does it? You know, I'd like to give that a shot sometime. You go to sleep, wake up, and winter's over. Hmm, I'm really hungry. Well, we know one man who survived the cold for over three weeks just like that. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Imagine you're going on a picnic with your colleagues. To make the get-together even better, you choose to meet in the mountains. What could be better than a delicious meal in the open air with an incredible view? Well, that's exactly what Mitsutaka Ushikoshi thought on October 7, 2006. That day, he went up Mount Roko to join his buddies from work. This mountain chain in Japan is a popular attraction for climbers and tourists, and for good reason. The view it offers is just amazing. If you climb there, you can see both Kobe and Osaka from above, and they're two of the largest cities in the country. So after Mitsutaka and his friends had a really good time and were done with the grilling, they decided to come down and go home. For that, they used a cable car. After all, that was how they got to the peak in the first place. The trolley's relatively cheap, it's 590 yen or approximately $5.50 for a person. It's fast, the ride to Kobe takes about 10 minutes, and it's a good way to take in the beautiful mountain scenery. It seemed like a perfect way to end their day. Everyone felt that way. Well, except Mitsutaka. He came up with an even better idea. What if he stayed and found his way down all by himself? That's why he said goodbye to his partners and hit the road. He didn't know it yet, but that plan was about to change his whole life. At first, everything was just fine. He was walking through the beautiful hills, thinking about the nice day he had, and of course, all that on a full stomach. This was important because he wouldn't have a chance to eat properly anytime soon. But hang on. Perhaps you wonder what could have happened to a 35-year-old healthy man who was just returning home from a harmless party with his co-workers. Well, something that could occur to anyone who tried to get out of the woods without quite knowing the right path. At some point that day, he simply got lost. I'm sure you know that in cases like this, it's only right to find a river and follow it in the same direction as current. That could lead you to a bigger pond or a town where you could ask local people for help. Surely Mitsutaka knew that too, and he was lucky enough to happen upon a stream. But when he tried to cross it, he slipped and fell. And the worst part was, he broke his pelvis, which made it almost impossible to walk normally. Lost in the mountains with a fresh injury and night starting to fall on top of that. I can only imagine how Mitsutaka felt. As time passed, the second day of his adventures began. A bottle with a little water left and a barbecue sauce were the only things he had. But apart from being thirsty and hungry, he must have been pretty exhausted by the time he reached a meadow. He lay down to rest there. He recalled later that the sun was out, he was in a field, and he felt very comfortable. That was the last thing he remembered. Apparently, he drifted off after that. I hope he at least had the sweetest of dreams, because his slumber lasted far longer than your average weekend sleep-in. It was only by sheer luck that on October 31st, a hiker was tramping through the area. When he stumbled upon a man, it was, of course, none other than Mitsutaka. He had a barely palpable pulse, his organs were hardly functioning, and his body temperature was no higher than 72 degrees Fahrenheit. But what was most important, and what shocked experts, was that he was alive. He spent 24 days wounded without food, water, or any protection from the rain and cold. And in spite of everything, he was still breathing and his heart didn't stop beating. I'd say it was a real miracle. Doctors explained that while he lost consciousness at some point, his survival instincts were very much alive. Even more so, to protect itself, his body entered a state similar to hibernation. That's right, he practically slept through more than three weeks, almost like a hedgehog or a squirrel. But to be honest, it's slightly more complicated than an ordinary nap. As you probably know, we live on energy that we get from food. 
and the process that turns every single meal we have into energy is metabolism. When you don't eat for some time, your body starts to burn calories slower to conserve energy. Since Mitsutaka clearly had nothing to nibble on for over 20 days, his metabolism decreased to a minimum. That's when the big cookout he had earlier came in handy. His own temperature dropped, as the temperature outside eventually fell to 50 degrees Fahrenheit as well. His heart rate weakened, and his breathing tapered off. In other words, his whole body had slowed down just to get through this. After two months in the hospital in Kobe, he was as good as new. Dr. Shinichi Sato, who treated him, claimed that his brain had also recovered 100%, as if nothing had really happened. There were, of course, some people who struggled to believe that Mitsutaka got off that easy. After all, we don't know for sure how long he was hypothermic. But most scientists were excited, because it was the first known example of a human going through hibernation. This mechanism had worked for ages in animals. Once we're sure that we're also capable of slowing down our biological processes to preserve life, we'll have plenty of opportunities to use it. You may be surprised, but one of them is space travel. We've all seen it in dozens of sci-fi movies. A spacecraft with sleeping people on board, waiting to wake up when the ship reaches its destination. If you really think about it, hibernation could be the key to exploring the universe in reality. Let's say we've managed to build a machine that could take us to Mars or Jupiter. But how do we get enough water and food for the crew, considering that the flight could take years? And how can we sustain their overall physical and mental health during the travel? It would really help to solve these problems if we learn to freeze up metabolism for the long term. As far as more down-to-earth issues are concerned, it could also be applied in medicine. Often when someone needs a transplant, they have to get on the list for a donor. If hibernation was possible, they could just pass through the waiting time without a greater threat to their life. The same goes for the treatment of any patients. In the event of an emergency, doctors have to make the right diagnosis and fix the problem at hand in a matter of minutes or even seconds. If new techniques gave them more time, it could save millions of lives. In fact, a procedure that somewhat resembles hibernation has been used by doctors for decades. I'm talking about TTM, or Targeted Temperature Management. Usually, it involves cases of cardiac arrest. When a patient's heart had stopped and they didn't regain consciousness, physicians would intentionally cool down their body to a temperature as low as 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Most often it stays that way for 24 hours, and after that, doctors slowly rewarm it. This whole process prevents tissue injury when blood flow is blocked. Maybe researchers will take this technique further to simulate hibernation. Or who knows, maybe they'll come up with something new. In any case, most likely, we'll have to wait years before we'll be able to hibernate. But thanks to Mitsutaka Uchikoshi, now we know that our bodies can do a lot more than we thought before. So, how about you? What technology of the future do you dream of? Let me know down in the comments. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But don't go hibernate just yet. We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. Just click on this left or right video and enjoy. Stay on the bright side of life.